Um, I'm Kayla Adelman, and I'm interviewing Erwin Hack today. Hi, Hi. Kayla. Okay, so for my first question, it is, have you lived here all of your life? I have lived in the Strasbourg community all my life. Mm -hmm. uh, the first 10 years were in a bushy backward, a backwoods area southeast of Strasbourg. Right. And uh, then my, my parents, for us to be close to school, uh, moved a mile west of town. Okay. And uh, that's where I spent the rest of my life. Right, right now we're in the Centennial Manor mm -hmm. in Strasbourg. Okay. Um, where did you go to school then? Uh, I started school uh, at age five at Last Mountain Valley. That's about four miles uh, east of here mm -hmm. and a half a mile south. It's a one-room country school. Right. Uh, straight across from the uh, Peary homestead right. uh, and uh, uh, I, w I started school in April and uh, went till June and I hated every day of it. <laughs> uh, my sister and I could not talk English. We were, right. we were raised German mm -hmm. and uh, so that was a problem f uh, I guess at the school and right. a problem for us too. Uh, we were about two and a half miles from school right. and uh, we walked to school and uh, most of the time and back again uh, except in inclement weather mm -hmm. and uh, then my dad took us with uh, horses and right. a wagon right. and uh, in the winter time we went with a, a cutter it was a sort of a closed in uh, box on a sleigh we'll call it uh, and uh, but it had a wood heater in it and uh, it was always quite warm in yeah. there so we were always comfortable. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Uh, sometimes after a storm uh, we would upset on the way to school so we'd all have to barrel out and set up the cutter again. <laughs> uh, the Gessner boys Charlie and Jimmy would sometimes uh, they would meet us at the corner and uh, they would ride the rails that's the sleigh in the back. Mm -hmm. uh, they would be outside to school yeah and uh, and sometimes also we met uh, uh, Bertha and Bernice Ladwig mm -hmm. and uh, my dad and their dad would take turns taking us to school the one and a half miles that we had to go from there uh, after we moved uh, west of Strasbourg uh, west of town west of Strasbourg of course we walked to school from there right. and uh, we took all our schooling and, and graduated uh, with uh, 36 other uh, uh, classmates, I guess. And I had the pleasure of having a teacher like Mr. Bill Derby and Mr. Ray Speckett. Church was also an important part of our family life. And we were members of St. John Lutheran Church uh, all our lives. Uh, went to church in the wintertime with a horses and cutter. Uh, and in the summertime, we had a 29 Chev coupe. And uh, we drove in that, but there was only room for three in the front. So my dad took the lid off the, uh, the uh, lid off the back, the trunk lid off. And uh, I sat on a little stool in the back there. And uh, I had to ride back there. And uh, whenever uh, there was a car behind us, I was very embarrassed <laughs> because people would be pointing, look at this. And, uh, and uh, so, so that wasn't all that great. Uh, Christmas concerts at the church, uh, my mother and dad suggested that my sister and I should sing a duet, duet in German. And uh, that was very humiliating and very embarrass embarrassing and very nerve wracking. <laughs> um, what did your average day look like at school? Well, the average day started off with uh, singing a hymn, uh, saying the Lord's Prayer, uh, and singing O Canada. And on the weekends? We did, we did all the subjects, uh, reading, writing, and arithmetic. Mm -hmm. uh, recesses were spent uh, playing ball or playing cricket or in the wintertime sliding down a hill on a toboggan. Uh, lunchtime we would sometimes walk over to Peary, so which was about a quarter of a mile east of the school, and uh, they would always give us uh, milk and cookies mm -hmm. in exchange for what was happening at the school. Uh, 
in the, and sometimes in the spring we would uh, go in the neighboring bushes and look for uh, crow's nests. Uh, the municipality paid us uh, two cents a pair for la crow's legs and gave us points for crow's eggs. The bigger boys uh, uh, used to climb the trees and us little guys had to hold our hats out and catch the eggs or the little or and catch the little birds too. Uh, after school, uh, uh, after school, we went out and stood at attention and sang "God Save the Queen," and took down the flag. Then away we went home on our bikes, or our dad would pick us up with horses and cutter. Weekends were spent at home, trapping gophers because we were paid five cents a tail. Uh, pardon me, it was two cents a tail for a gopher tail. That was paid by the RM too. Uh, or looking for crow's nests and, and robbing the, the nests of the little birds. Uh, or just plain riding horseback. Uh, sometimes uh, we'd, we'd be riding on, a, on an old trail and a prairie chicken would fly up and, and we'd fall off. And then uh, we didn't have a saddle, I didn't have a saddle, so we had to look for a place to get on. So if there was a big stone, I climbed up on the stone or a fence post and uh, jumped on the back of the horse and away I went. Uh, and I also had a small trap line uh, that I trapped muskrats. And uh, I used to check it with a, hor uh, with a horse and, and uh, stone boat. And uh, if, I, if there was a muskrat house, I would chop a hole in it and set a trap in there. And uh, if I was lucky, I caught a muskrat. And uh, then I would take it home and I would skin it and uh, stretch it out on a board. And uh, then uh, in the spring, I would, we would sell the pelts for not very much, but anyway, yeah. something. <laughs> uh, sliding down straw stacks, was, straw stacks was another thing. They used to thrash everything. And it was big straw stacks. And it was always fun to climb up there in the wintertime and, and uh, go sliding down. My parents didn't like that because wherever you walked on a straw stack, the water would soak in next, next summer and spoil the, spoil the straw. Visiting neighbors was also a, something that we uh, uh, looked forward to. And we had neighbors like the Klatz, uh, the Ehlers, the Gessners, uh, Deckers, Cars, Bowers, and many more. And we would go for supper there and after supper, the uh, moms and dads would play cards, and uh, us kids would uh, have a lot of fun together. There was no TV in those days, so we learned to play by ourselves. We had a battery-powered radio. It had uh, round batteries in it. They were about that long and about that round. Uh, but the only thing we listened to was the news. Uh, and when the news came on, everybody had to be as quiet as a mouse. And uh, those were the war years, and uh, my parents were very interested in what was happening uh, in both Canada and Germany, for that matter. And so it was very important. Um, who did you look up to as a kid, and why? Well, I looked up, certainly looked up to my mother. Uh, had a favorite teacher. Her name was. Eileen Klein, Mrs. Mrs. Klein, and uh, Miss Eisworth, Florine Eisworth, and was privileged to have Mr. Bill Derby and Mr. Ray Speckett. Mr. Speckett taught us taught uh, me music, and uh, and I played in the Strasbourg band for a few years, and then went on to the Earl Grey Marching Band. So music was always part of of uh, my life. Uh, I like to watch senior hockey. Very much enjoyed watching Bob Gusserson and Jim Swan. Bob had a mean hip check, and I always wanted to, wished I could do that. Uh, what were your chores? Chores had to be done every day. We always had chickens and laying hens. Eggs had to be gathered every day. And the chicken house had to be cleaned, which I hated. Every day after school, the cows had to be brought home for milking from the field. 
And we had one cow with a bell around its neck, and uh, then I could always tell, I would stop and listen for the bell, and I could always tell where the cows were by the, by the bell that was ringing. Uh, at night, my sister and I would help with the milking, and then separate the milk from the cream. Uh, the cream was hung in, in an old well because we did not, of course, have power, uh, to keep it cool. And then delivered, uh, we, went, we came to town once a week and uh, delivered, the cream, delivered the cream and bought a few things and bought a few groceries and so on and so forth. Cream chucks were always very valuable. And uh, uh, any surplus, surplus milk was fed to pigs. Um, what was your dream job when you were growing up and what did you end up being? Well, in high school, I, I dreamt of, of becoming a pilot. I looked up at the airplanes and I thought flying seemed to be so exciting and cool and, uh, and seemed to look so relaxing and uh, quiet up there, you know, and, uh, uh, and, and so I, th that was on my mind. I also loved the land, watching things grow, liking, liked all animals, and also the chickens and ducks and turkeys and all that kind of stuff on the farm. And I ended up uh, being a farmer and uh, grew crops, raised cattle, raised pigs and raised chickens and turkeys and that sort of thing. Uh, started farming in 1961 and continued for 52 years. 1961 was a very dry year and I grew 500 bushels that year on rented land and I had to give a third of that up. So it was kind of sparse that winter. Uh, had to give up a third of the crop actually. Farming was very good through all the, all the years and I only had two crop failures in 52 years. So was very fortunate. Um, was education important to you and or your peers? Education for us was so very important, especially to my parents, more so than to us. Uh, but for, for we also realized that uh, we 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 had to have a grade twelve minimum, and uh, uh, farming has been a learning experience for for me. Uh, I took many courses through the years, and. Uh, Courses in bookkeeping and markets, uh, marketing, uh, and anything connected to farming that mm -hmm. would uh, uh, do a better job of raising crops yeah. and uh, livestock and uh, machinery and, and fixing machinery and that sort of thing. Would you say your parents were struggling to make money and put food on the table? My parents were very poor, especially in earlier years. But as kids, we're, we didn't know that. Uh, everybody was in the same boat. Yeah. Uh, the neighbors all, nobody had anything. Uh, and on the farm, we grew mostly everything that we needed to eat. Right. And we never ever went hungry. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was always a struggle to meet expenses. Uh, and all the work, of course, on the farm was uh, hand labor. Mm -hmm. Uh, my dad cut wood all winter and would deliver it to town and sell it for a few dollars and made some money that way. Okay. Um, so my last question is, what is your favorite childhood memory? Well, I have many childhood memories. Uh, thrashing uh, days were, uh, were, were, were one of them. And uh, it was really exciting to see a thrashing machine pull into the yard. One of our neighbors did all, our, did all the other neighbors thrashing. Mm -hmm. And uh, the local farmers all helped uh, on, on, to run the outfit. Right. And uh, when they came in with the machine, the machine always came first. And then a whole line of uh, hay racks and uh, uh, horses and hay racks and, and guys. Mm -hmm. And uh, the guys would always, of course, uh, talk to us and tease us. Uh, and trips to town with the, with the horses and sleigh uh, were always exciting. Uh, we'd always get a, a candy or two from the storekeeper. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Bott was one of them. Uh, and we look forward to that. 
Visiting neighbors was a big thing at that time. We all, all of us in the area visited a, a lot. Uh, Christmas concerts, uh, picture shows on Saturday nights, hockey games. We went to Regina on a train. Uh, we went about every couple of years and that was exciting. Yeah. Uh, and surviving on the farm with my parents was a priceless memory. Oh, perfect. Thank you so much for answering my yeah. questions. Thank you.